Yeah. All right, so we're one on two. Huh? We're on two. We are now? Yeah. All right, good. So then I can back out of that and go over to here and be done. Okay. Here we go. Sorry about that. I had my second COVID shot today. I think my brain's in the fog. Are you feeling, Judy? Uh, I'm feeling fine. I'm just a little slow right now. I, I, you know, that's because Bill keeps distracting me with questions. I have my nerve to Me, I'm good. Well, congrats. Back to go. To go. Okay, the March meeting of the March the March 2021 meeting of the Board of Water Commission called to order. Um, reading of the minutes. Yeah. Reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. No problem. I got a motion. Bob. Yeah. Second, second. That Matt. And those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carry. Presentation of bills and accounts. We still have to wait for Joanna. No. No. She, she, yeah, no. I have signed. I just am now have to. Um, I just have to send them over to the email. So yeah, I, I have mine signed too. I'll just get it over. I move it to be accept the bills as presented. Okay. okay. Second. I can second. second. Okay, thank you. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carrie? COVID-19. I just want to thank the mayor for arranging for all the city people that want their shots to get them. We had a little confusion, but because by the time you sent out your notice, all the slots have been taken. Um, and so we, we, I just sent everything to Roy, but he organized it. So we just have to give him a list and then the county will reach out to our employees. Okay. So Is there that's, a time frame? Um, I imagine it'll be next week. So they can, uh, yeah. So the, we can start as of March 17th. And so as the county, uh, has vaccines available for each of their pods of after the 17th, they'll be working in our municipal staff into each of the pods. Um, you know, so they're going to combine all of us from the different villages, towns, and city government, and then, um, you know, assign our staff spots, it seems. Um, we'll know more, but it's a, it's a good sign that we're at least, um, it does seem like the amount of vaccine is increasing greatly. Um, and uh, the county does want to try to get all of the government workers done as quickly as possible. Good. So we, we sent Royal list of six. Um, the reason it's only six out of 30 is because several of us have already gotten them. Um, we have some guys that are volunteer fire people that got them, seems like a long time ago. Um, and other people that over the weekend went to some of these pop-ups and, and were, were taken care of. So, um, you know, we're just, I, I have to tell you, there's a lot of employees here that are very grateful that they're actually on this. So, yeah. A lot of people that really want them especially some of our older folks. So. Will we have many that won't be getting it all together and the, the majority of the staff will not be getting it. Okay. The majority of our staff is under 40. No, but it, when it's available. I don't, I think eventually they will. I, I think everybody does their own risk assessment. Mm -hmm. And I think some of our younger guys, at least from what they told me, their risk assessment is, I'll take my shot, I wanna make sure there are no side effects. Where the rest of us have done that risk analysis and say I'm sick of being home. Because I'm not really critical skills enough at my age. Are they? Uh, the, way the, the way the state has phased them in, they're not. But a lot of our employees got them because they were over that critical age and were able to get them without being considered an essential because it seemed like some of the essential employees were going to the bottom of the list as the list kept expanding. My primary concern will be filter plant getting people up there to make sure you have people who have had both shots. Well we have a couple of we have a couple of people up there that one in one one of our 
key people, he just recovered from COVID, so he can't get a shot right now. But he will when he's able. We have another employee who very specifically wants a specific vaccine. He made that determination. So he will get, he will, he will search out that on his own. Um, and another employee is in quarantine right now because his mom just came down with COVID. So he can't, he's not a candidate for vaccination either. So Do you have anybody out there who has who has had two shots? Yes, the chief operator. Okay, there you go. So you're covered. I've had two shots, he's had two shots. Yes, we've had a couple of people. Well, even if, I think part of the rules say that even if they come in contact with someone who is COVID or does have the COVID, they're not required to, to quarantine. As I understand it. Yes. Yeah. So I think we're covered and, and, and we're grateful that, you know. Well, we'll follow up after the 17th, see how many shots are given. And yeah. by next month, we'll figure out. There is, well, not that we can force anybody to do it, but. You can't force anybody to get vaccinated until the FDA, this is an emergency authorization. And federal law says that as long as it's an emergency authorization, Totally voluntary, even in the military, which you would think that they would have some ability to force the troops to do, but they can't. So, okay. Anyway. Positive news. Yeah, good. We're good. Hey, nothing else other than that? Nope. Nope. We're all doing good. Okay. Uh, Cooper Lake. Man, we got, we're moving today on that. Um, the PLA was signed by Dennis and Todd DiOrio, who's the head of the Consolidated building trades union. And the only thing that remains is it has to go out to each of the individual trades to have them sign the supplemental page. And that's taken a little bit, but um, as of Friday, we will be officially out to bid on Cooper Lake. It's appearing in the Daily Freeman on the 12th. And that's all good news. Um, we will not be, hand as all bids, um, we will not be answering any phone calls or any questions about that. That really needs to be directed to our engineers in writing um, so that they can send it out to all the plan holders of records. So it's a level playing field for everybody. My conversation with Mike Ham of the operating union is that he's actually chatted with, he said eight construction companies and they're all interested. How interested translates into bids. I mean, they got to look at the documents first, but it's a good sign that there's interest out there and that we should have a, a pretty good, um, you know, if we get four or five bids, that, that would be great. There is a mandatory um, virtual meeting, pre-bid construction meeting, pre-bid meeting on the 23rd. Yes. Yeah. And then there's a mandatory site visit on the 24th. So after that, and then bids are returned on the 8th. Um, it'll take the engineers, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe 10 days. They'll do it as soon as they can. But these are complicated bids and the bid form is a little complicated. So they'll take a while to, you know, figure out who's the low bidder, the apparent low bidder, and then um, that will not coincide with the board meeting. So we we're likely to ask for a special meeting to approve the bids uh, subsequent to their recommendation. Um, the other thing that we did on that was Ming Hollow is, you know, we're going to have to lower the water level 10 feet when construction starts. We have to start doing that now um, because um, as the ice goes out, you know, we really, it's, it takes, a, it'll take about 90 days to get it there, depending upon where we're starting from. Um, we're a couple of feet down right now. Um, so it, it's imperative that we get as much water from Mink Hollow whenever it's there to get um, so we can maintain that 10 foot level. If that level starts to drop significantly, we're going to end up having to go on the Ashokan or, or do something for drought emergency because, you know, we're, we're starting kind of down there. Um, usually, you know, if, if it gets down five feet, you know, you start to worry. We're starting the year at 10 instead of 100, 10 feet down. So the, today we applied for a permit to the DEC to uh, clean up Mink Hollow. Um, it's something that we do every couple of years. After Hurricane Irene, the Mink Hollow stream became somewhat destabilized. And so now all these cobbles, every time there's a major rainstorm, they just, and they fill up the intake. 
Now we still get water, but they're displacing some of the pool that we could be drawing from. So we applied for a permit um, because of the, you can only do that activity between May 1st and the 30th of September because of the trout spawning season. So um, by applying for that permit now, we should have it in hand on May 1st. So we should be able to do that periodically throughout the year to be able to um, clean it out. Because invariably we clean it out, two weeks later there's a big storm event and it fills, partially fills back up. So we'll stay on it as long as that permit is open. So, um, and when, once they issue the permit, and I have no doubt they'll issue it because um, they issue one to us about every two years, ever since Hurricane Irene came through. So, so Cooper Lake is officially moving along. Is there a sequence of what construction work will be done? Absolutely. And that's set by the big? It, it, the contract documents specify, yes. Okay. yes. Um, initially, we thought that we really wanted, before they started the work on any of the work on the intake structures, that's the first thing to be done. We would have the temporary connection for the show camp already completed. And as it turned out, we're going to do that simultaneously because by the by the time they get to the level where they're, they're going to have the, the reservoir down and they're going to be driving the sheet piling for the coffer dam, the show can connection will be done. So um, that's kind of a quick piece. And then the engineers, any day, no work can occur when our engineers aren't present because of, you know, rebuilding a dam is... Um, you gotta make sure it gets done right because of the danger. Um, so it'll be well supervised. And while there's some latitude for the contractor, I mean, he may decide that when he's doing a part of the work around the main dam that he wants to go out, it's cost effective for him to do the work on the west side. That's fine. But yes, there are there are certain requirements and sequencing. All the intake and piping work has to be done first in this first year. And then the second year is really the dam work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty tightly controlled. Okay. Okay. Uh, transmission main rehab. Okay. Um, it probably makes sense to do the we have 2020 and the okay. transmission main together. We had a, a call with uh, CDM Smith um, yesterday, and. We now have cost estimates for what we hope to accomplish in those two. So we have left over on the Biddy Water project, and that's all grant money. We have about $380,000 remaining. And in the WIA grant, we have about 1.1 million. So that gives us a total of $2,018,500. Uh, I'm sorry, that gives us one, one, one point four. Or eight million, and we have the total of the estimates for all the work comes in a little over two million. So we had to make we have to make some decisions, and so we're working. We're meeting with the staff. I mean, we met today, Ryan and Debbie and I, and, and Matt. We met yesterday, and we met again today to figure out how to get the most bang out of our buck for that you know one point four eight million dollars. And I think. Um, there's certain, certain things that we're going to, certain things that are critical to be done now that we'll probably put off. But the good news is we already have pretty tight cost estimates for what they're going to cost. So we'll roll those into a capital improvement plan. And hopefully, you know, on the next grant cycle, we'll bundle them up and, you know, use them for our, one of our applications. Our focus right now is there's about $56,000 worth of skating work that should be done to really, there's a couple of things we missed the first go around and this will make that a really function, a well-functioning system. And that money, um, and we've identified a couple of major leaks between the plant and the Bend of Water. We figure it'll be 178,000 or so to get those repaired. They're in a place where it's impossible for us to actually go and repair them. There is a possibility that a contractor would build us access to the road through the woods to get to these leaks. 
And then we might be able to save some money by actually having our personnel go in and fix them. Um, that's certainly an option. And then during the bidding water project itself, we realized that downstream from bidding water, closer to the city in Boyce's Farm, where the old trailer park used to be, um, there's some valves there that are, are broken that um, we want to get replaced. So that would, those two items right there would account for the remainder of the Benny Water funds and they would be well used. And then for the WIA grant, we're, we're leaning toward thinking that we take care of the SCADA and then we come into town and we have enough money to do well, between eight and 12 of the replacement valves on a 16 inch transmission main in the city. One of the key issues we have right now is we have valves there that just don't operate, they don't work. Um, and all the side streets, once the transmission main goes through, say it goes through Green Hill Avenue or Clinton Avenue, all the side streets are tied into it. So if you have a valve and you have to go from Green Hill Avenue down to North Front Street, you can imagine how many side valves have to work. And if not, not you, you really have a hard time getting it uh, shut down. So if you want to save overtime, you really don't want to spend two hours fixing the leak and 12 hours getting a shutdown. We've done that. You know, it's, it's taken us that long to get the water shut down. So those valves would be well spent um, and, and a welcome addition. And then we could maybe plan to do, there's about 25 or 30 in the system that could stand. Some, some are relatively new and we don't have to replace them, but we could, once we have that, that group in the, in the beginning, those eight or 12 valves, and it will depend on how much each one costs. The costs will vary a little bit because if we can do an insertion valve, it's like about $71,000. If we have to do a double line stop because we have to do a side gear valve because we don't have the clearance, then it's $140,000. So it'll depend on the bids and where we select them. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're sitting down with Ryan and I and, and his guys are sitting down and we're figuring out where the best possible location for them to be to give us the most control and then the opportunity to backfill in subsequent years. So maybe over 10 years, we can knock, do a couple of years and knock them all off. So that's where we stand on that. Um, we will finalize that, get back to our engineers and we'll come in to you know, start to put the bid documents together. And we'll bring that back to the board to let them know what our recommendations are um, down the road. Okay. Uh, Quarry Street. Phil's working with their attorney to get the agreement, and I expect we'll probably have something next month. Good. I mean, have you heard back from the school? No, I haven't been there. Yet. No, I, I mean, we offered to get the agreement over to their attorney. Um, and I was just going to do a letter agreement act yeah. just, just to confirm what our agreement was, and I'll take care of that. And Alan from the, uh, from the school district only got back to me, you know, <clears throat> in February. So it, it's it's in motion. Okay. Well, that's about it. We need to re-sign those documents for the fourth time because the state hasn't provided them to us in the format that the Office of General Services will accept. So um, they, I, I printed them and Bill and, and Dennis need to execute them and that'll be done um, uh, after this meeting, before, before they leave. And you haven't heard back from them at all about getting us? I did, yeah. I did, I talked, I mean, they wouldn't give me any information at first. And then I talked to the guy on the phone and I said, I'm not, I'm not asking you for the final closeout figure because I know you have another year to do on this contract. So what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm aware we gave you this amount of money and it was supposed to be for the, the work that we, we have, that you've completed already. But I have not been told, are there change orders? Are there change orders under discussion, anything pending? And they said, there are no change orders at this point in time. Now the work's done. So. There's nothing more that has to be done? On our end, no. Okay. 
No. So that was good news, which mm -hmm. means we have more to pay back. But I think by the time we found out about it, um, it was too late because you know we have to work on the timetable of the city and their fiscal officer. So it took them. I mean, it literally took DOT three weeks to answer my email. They're busy, I guess. Yeah. Well, we so, still have extra money set aside too. Though. Right, but but so we paid two hundred thousand down on back on that loan, and then we still have how much we have? Four hundred. I think about a little over 200. I think right. So, back. had I had that information, I probably would have kept maybe 150 just mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. Because actually, with most projects, there are, there are usually things that wait till the end to be negotiated. They're not big items usually. But it's, instead of getting into a big argument and a discussion up front, you say, hey, well, we'll just throw that at the end. We'll work on that at the end. And that keeps everybody happy and everybody moving. So, um, but the word was from the guys that were actually managing the project that they, at this point in time, they are not anticipating any change orders. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to say those guys have been a pretty good, they, they have a good contractor, at least from our perspective. Good weather. Yeah, but, but you know, the, we haven't really had that. I mean, yeah, there's a few services they pulled and some other stuff, but nothing, nothing that was, um, there's nothing that, that was, you know, really out of the ordinary and the, the DOT managers were, were pretty much right on it. So um, we'll see. So I guess that was good news. Tech City. I think we'll talk about that afterward in executive session. Detection. Uh, I sent a memo in the board packet. We, um, I think it's really important, and I know we didn't necessarily budget for more than five. Matt, we put in about five thousand dollars every year for the detection, and our plan was over five years to do a fifth of the, of the system every year. But with Cooper Lake on the rise and our flows are up, and I'm sure our flows will go back down, but we haven't come in and do the downtown area. And we found maybe three main leaks and about eight service leaks. And we're in the process of repairing those and notifying customers that they need to fix the repair leaks. Um, but I think if I can get demand down to the lowest possible extent by fixing, we know there's other leaks because our flows are higher than they should be by about 300,000 gallons a day. Yeah. So, you know, we need to really, we, we, if, we, if we could find our way clear to doing the whole system, the balance of the system in the next few weeks before we really get into Cooper, um, before the summer months hit us when, you know, we might not have as much rainfall as we'd like, um, it would potentially reduce our flows even more. And I know it's not in the budget beyond the five, but I figured about, did they, their fee is 19, $1,975 a day, just under $2,000 a day. Um, he did all of downtown in three days, you know, and that's from Hudson Street, Abeel, all the way up through the avenues uh, to Delaware, um, up that way, through Pinkaki, you know, the whole bottom part of the city he did. Um, he probably doesn't have to do Grandview because we had seven leaks there and we know our flows are normal and, and that's pretty tight. Um, but, you know, the way we would, it would probably cost about $20,000 or less than $20,000 to do the rest of the system. And I'd like to suggest we consider that. Um, and the way we would pay for that, because I know that's your next question. <laughs> We budgeted $35,000, $30,000, dollars $30, for a piece of equipment that as much as we'd like it, we'd like to flows down more. So we would propose to, Ryan would easily forego that equipment, postpone that purchase until 
I come back to you later in the year and say, hey, we're under budget on all these other items and now we can afford it, or we put it in next year's budget. So it's a valve turner for our new uh, small little hydro vac. It'd be handy to have, but we've got another valve turner if we need it. So, so the money would be in the budget to some extent. You know, we just transferred from one piece of equipment to this activity. We don't have the seat broken up that we can kind of track flows enough to sit there and say, well, you know, we're noticing it on this part of the city versus... We can do that in the two pump high pressure districts, Foxwall area and Grand, Foxwall and Grandview. We certainly can do that. And that's how we knew. We knew the flows at Grandview were tremendously high. And, you know, we had Stickles, we had um, Marilina, we, and, you know, and then all of a sudden those numbers came down and they bend down and, and they're, we're back. And after, they, after we or they found a, a leak, you mean? We found those leaks. Okay. Well, they're hard to ignore when the road collapses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stick with that. But we're not having a lot of road collapses due to our water lines. That's not true. for the 300 though, right? No, so. no. So, so that we were up about 500. So that brought it down. So we know that Grandview's tight. Foxwell, there's something little going on there, but it's not terrible. We're, we're you know, it, it's something within normal ranges. But, but there's, so there's something else in the rest of the city. We chose, we made, kind of made a conscious choice to have them go downtown because every leak downtown is, it's higher pressure because we're a gravity system. So if you have a leak, you know, on Upper Pearl Street, you're not gonna, the same size leak as downtown where the pressure is hundred pounds and you got 60 up here, you're gonna lose a lot more water. So, in uptown Kingston's all sand, so it may never surface. Um, sometimes we find leaks by getting a call from the sewer department. They pull the manhole for a routine inspection or some other reason, and they see clear water running in it. They take a sample, it's chlorine. So some of our leaks go directly into the sewers because they're kind of porous in some neighborhoods in some places. And, uh, you know, the leak's going to go where it's going to go. You know. Take care of it. That leak over by um, the railroad tracks? Yes, that was another good leak. That was Emmerich Street actually um, was is a paper, part of Emmerich was, was I think a paper street, or maybe it always went through, but where the county records building is, that parking lot is still, as far as our mains are concerned, part of Emmerich Street. And so um, one of the guys went, I think from the county went out, I don't know, one of the buildings, the Browns guys went out and looked, and right next to the railroad tracks, there was water coming up. Not an area, you know, the train certainly wouldn't have seen that. Somebody walking along the tracks may have, but we were lucky that it was one of the county maintenance guys. And he called us and sure enough, it was there. And, um, we installed another valve to be able to, so now these happen because the main goes under the railroad tracks. Because of the train traffic, that's why they break under the tracks because of the constant pounding. But we're not allowed to fix them without, it's a big rigmarole to go through a, get a CSX permit and anyway, so we have a dead end there on both sides. And we'll, that's, we, 2014, we had three of them that were repaired. You wait until you have a water quality issue, a circulatory issue, and then, then you issue a contract and you fix them all at once. But, um, so do we need a motion? Or I would ask you for a motion to hire New York leak detection to do um, a, a leak survey of the rest of the city at a cost not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. We'll see what we get done. If you find something pretty quickly, well, we're working on those already. Okay. I mean, he he comes in, he gets you know, finds three. And the guys will go down. On the, they fix the hydrant. What happens if he's on like day three of someplace in the city and he finds something substantial that would account for most of this? Going to continue to have to do the whole city. We don't or? necessarily have to. No, we could we could stop. I mean, can you set up the contract that way? We, we, it's a per diem. Okay. It's a per diem contract, so yes, we can. So I mean, if you find something off the yes. bat early, there's no need for them to do another five no, more days. Then we, then we postpone it and have them come in next year's budget. Okay. That, that's a good idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, one one just point that I, I wanted to make in terms of uh, if we're looking for another benefit um, and another reason why, I mean, 
we're all aware that Central Hudson is continuing to work uh, in our city to um, replace gas lines. And many of those happen to be near or under or above or near On our top. lines. And so by us having uh, a survey in advance, especially I believe Central Hudson is gonna be working downtown this year. Um, we will have basically pre-scouted out all of the leaks that um, through this so that if they are digging and pounding, you know, we can say to them in advance of their work starting, hey, we did a leak detection last month. This is our current status. If we get a call, um, you know, on this street while you're working, you know, you've basically been put on notice that we don't have any leaks on that street. And so the, okay. it, it, I think that this information should be helpful for us in making any of those cases going forward anywhere else that, you know, again, especially downtown this summer. So I, I think that this is going to be handy for us uh, in particular. I already have the report from downtown. I will forward it to you. It's a, a PDF and it lists where they all are, pictures and everything. And so and with, by the, when, are they starting now? I assume they're starting immediately. Well, they haven't given, I mean, they haven't given us the final determination and, you know, we okay. told them specifically to reach out to you. So if you don't know yet, uh, you no, know, know, so that's maybe they're still making their final determination, okay. but uh, okay. Jason should be, you know, you should probably call them tomorrow and make sure, and oh. like they, they should, they've been told to uh, make sure that the water department is involved in these discussions. Okay, I appreciate that. And I will, I will reach out to Jason. He's usually pretty easy to deal with. Um, I, I will do that and I will send over that report so you have a copy of where it is. And you know, that, that's a great thought because I had I'm so focused on getting those flows down where they should be um, that that you're right that's a wonderful side benefit. Yeah, but I'll make a motion to approve um, spending the funds while I'm on here. Okay, I have a second. I'll second or uh, whatever. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Any further discussion? Not hearing any. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Kevin. That's with who? For all New York leak detection. detection. Okay. And that's it for that thing. Thank you, Bill. Did you get those off? Yeah, no. No, no. Okay. No. Okay. We all set there then, Judy? Yes, thank okay. you very much. Len Coffin? Um, very quickly, we, we're, we're starting our lead service line inventory. Um, Jane has, you know, done a record search, um, a database search, um, and we need to refine that. So we're in the process of going through the individual files on those accounts. Um, it takes a couple of months to get through that. Um, that's kind of a, a fill-in when we have time. And then I think the next step is we're going to, on those customers where we can't make a determination because of our records, we're going to try to reach out, reach out directly to the customers and get them maybe to um, fill out a survey and, and identify the kind of services coming into their home. We'll, we'll, there, there's a lead service line a, a consortium that has a, a great, you can, if you can, we don't have a lot of emails from people. But we can send it out with that link in there, and then that with pictures to identify what lead looks like, what galvanized look like, and if we send out notices like that to you know a couple thousand people and we get a few hundred back, that's a few hundred. We just don't have to knock on the door and get into it. So it, it'd be well worth the postage to do it. And we'll do it zone by zone, so we're not inundated with the information. Jay's working on zone one, zone one right now, and so we'll move from. There's about 1,500 accounts in each zone. Uh, zone two and four are small, a little bit smaller than that. Zone one's a little bit bigger. So we're 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 um, we're working on that. Do you have any idea, rough estimate? Of well, we got 500, 5,200 so far, but that's 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 the worst case scenario. That's every tap that was put in from 1884 to 1960. Okay. okay. What happens though, and what we found out with the lead line replacement money that the city administered was that people have gone in. The only time we get notified because we don't own the service lateral, 
The only time we get notified is if the plumber needs a new tap. But there is a little device, little connector called a lead pack. Now they're illegal to use now, but on a lot of cases, customers, the plumber use the lead tap, the lead pack to connect the old corporation, the old style square body corporation to the new copper line. And so when you think you have a lead service and you go down and you dig, you find out it's actually copper. So worst case scenario, to complete this survey, we'll have to pothole at the curb box with our new little mini hydro vac, where we can actually go down and see copper on this side, copper on that side, or lead on this side, copper and vice versa. But we're trying to eliminate, minimize how many of those we have to do. So we're hoping to kind of refine that number. So that's a number, but there's a lot less than that. We, we just haven't gotten to there yet. The other thing I think we should consider is um, next year, and, and I'll get some numbers this year so we can include it in the budget, but have a consulting firm do a corrosion optimization study. Because the way the rule is, we actually, corrosion control is through the addition of a hydrated lime, or, or essentially raising the pH. It's worked very effectively for us so far, especially with red water complaints. Um, by our previous sampling, it looks like it's worked on lead, but with the new sampling protocols, can't be sure. So um, we want, we'd like maybe somebody to look at how to optimize what we're doing now or what we could switch to in the future that might do a better job. The problem is the way the rule is written, they're almost telling you that you have to use an orthophosphate. And the one that most people use is a zinc orthophosphate. And you have to be careful how you make that switch because there's unintended consequences. But also I think on our speedies permit at the city's wastewater treatment plant, they have a limitation on zinc. So we could be enhancing our treatment in the water department and shooting the guys on the other end of the pipe in the foot. So we really need to maybe look at that. So I will reach out to several firms and get some pricing on what that would cost. And it would be, I think it would be a good thing to have in the, it, just to have in our hands, because if we don't make it, we're going to have to do that anyway. And when does this new sampling protocol start? 2024. So we got some time, but I think there's a lot of work. And when's our next sampling? Oh, we have to do it this year. Should we attempt to do some of them? Would you, under the new guidelines? I mean, do we have to report it? Uh, that's a question I have to ask. I, I have asked it and I haven't gotten an answer yet. But it, it's something a lot of us are thinking about. If we go ahead and do this just to see what if, yeah. do we have to? Report. Not that I don't want to report results, because I certainly do, right. but you don't want people to misinterpret them. Yeah, we're not violating current, we're violating standards, 2024 standards. Understood. Anyway, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky question. Yes, well. So um, I, I'm waiting for a response. We're, we're all waiting for, we have another meeting with the health department. This is all new to them, to be honest with you. The New York State Health Department, even the Bureau of Public Water Supply, they have, first of all, they have a tremendous staffing changes recently. Um, you're, um, and, and a lot of people got promoted, all new in their positions. But COVID has really, you know, they, the Bureau of Public Water Supply, a lot of their staff time is being done manning COVID sites, and it's all hands on deck. Yeah, I know. I've been through that. You've been through this. And so, um, they apologize up front, but they just don't have the staff time to get back to you on some of those questions. So they will, but it just takes a while. Yeah. So well, when are we planning on doing our sampling? We're doing our sampling this summer. We have to. Okay. So we have some time. And then, but that's with the previous protocols. Right. And that's, a, but you are allowed to go early if you want to. So we could. We could do it and just include it in our product. There's some details that we're asking that we have, that have to be worked out. So I'll, okay. get, I'll get back to you. Fair enough. Uh, 
correspondence? I have nothing. Superintendent's report? Next report? Any uh, changes or issues or questions? No, I'll entertain a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the superintendent's report. I'll second it. Any of those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Before you executive, did anybody get the email I sent to you? Yeah, did Buck Collins? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, I apologize. I neglected to put this in the board packet when we mailed it out on Friday. But um, we have a, a young man in our distribution system, Colin Miller, who is um, just past his one year anniversary. And you start in our department as a laborer, and then hopefully within a year, you're eligible for promotion to water maintenance assistant if you've demonstrated the right skills and, and, and attitude to do that. And then the following year, you're eligible to be promoted to a water service assistant. And the department's goals, the board's goals has always been to get everybody as educated and trained up and certified at the highest levels um, as possible. Colin's been with us that requisite year. We hired him from Sorbonne, so he had some skills when he came in. He is, you know, just uh, a good worker, uh, dedicated, sense of responsibility, sees something that needs to be done and does it. And um, I would recommend that the board promote him from labor to um, water maintenance assistant. The, the salary goes from about 43,000 to 47. It is a $4,500 increase. And the jump from labor to water maintenance is always that big. It's the same with a trainee going to a, a water plant, a junior water plant operator, a two-way operator. Um, that's the big bump. And it's, I didn't want him to wait another month because it's about $350 a month to him. And, you know. So this would, have been, this would be effective um, 13. 13. And it's also money that you already put in the budget. Because yes. we anticipated that he would be ready for okay. this. So it's not a new, it's, the money's in the budget for this. Okay. I'll make, I'll make the motion because Thank you. I'll second it. Second of Joanne. Yep. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Carried. Uh, anything else? Do we go in executive session now? Is there something? Here? I have nothing else for the regular board meeting. I have two issues for executive session. We can't, we can't do them here. Both involve legal issues. Uh, I'd like to do it at the conclusion of the meeting, address the board members. Uh, one has to do with Tech City, the other has to do with service laterals. Okay, so are we. I, I think I sent everybody the link for a, a meeting. So do we adjourn this meeting? Mm -hmm. We need a motion to adjourn or we just adjourn it? I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. 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 Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll adjourn. And I said everybody, everybody got the Zoom link for the meeting? I don't think I got it, but that's executive session. You don't need me for that, I don't think. No, no, Jim, you're right. I, 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 didn't, I didn't purposely do that, but I apologize. No problem. Nothing urgent, Jim. No, it's, it's really nothing at all to do with anything. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, understood. No problem. Boring stuff. Yeah. No, my apologies. <laughs> okay. No problem. And Thank you. After, Jimmy, after the meeting, I will send you the bid, in, the invitation to bid, and the, in the instructions for bidders because I have that. Oh, great. And I'll send you that after the meeting. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, everyone. I'm going to stay well and stay safe. Take care. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Yeah, I'm next Okay. Thank you all. I'll see you in a little bit. 3,200 units.
Opa, coisa. 